Good morning and warm welcome to the screening of the documentary Good Time Behind the Cloud by uh, Tencent Solo 9327, organized by Chennai Center for China Studies and Tibet Policy Institute. It is part of the research exercise and documentary studies. Now, I invite Commodore Ravid Rasan, Director General, Chennai Center for China Studies, to deliver the welcome address. All are small, no? R is the again caps. All are small. All, all are small. Thank you, Sapna. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you. A special good morning to all Army, Navy, Air Force veterans, Mr. Uh, Krishna Swami, uh, no, who is uh, highly decorated. He is an inspiration at his age. Likewise, we have uh, Captain Ramachandran, who is uh, running the Colors of Glory, Brigadier Subramaniam, Colonel Sundar, uh, and others who are here. A hearty welcome to you, a special welcome to also Dr. Sonika Gupta, and uh, whose students are with us, uh, delivering this <coughs> talk after the documentary show. Uh, the Chennai Center for China Studies has been in existence for 14 years, and I'm very happy to inform you that we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Tibet Policy Institute some years ago. So we've been conducting uh, many events, you know, one in Dharmashala, one in Chennai, and unfortunately the COVID has come in the way of uh, continuance of uh, that particular initiative. But all the researchers, about five of us, uh, went to Dharmushala about four years ago, five years ago, and we were able to call on uh, His, ex uh, His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama. Now we were told initially that uh, he will give us 10 minutes of audience. And you know, to our luck, we spent nearly one hour uh, with His Holiness, you know, where he was giving us first-hand accounts of what happened when they moved out from uh, Tibet and uh, with uh, hordes of books. So, you know, he said in a first-hand account that India has to thank me for holding on to some of these greatest uh, treasures, you know, particularly on Buddhism and uh, you know, how there was cultural connect between India and Tibet at that time. And those are, luckily, some of them are with us. Thanks to the fact that they, they were not just trying to save their lives and run away, but they're also trying to save all these treasures which are there today for posterity. So from that point of view, I think uh, uh, this is the initiative that we wanted to keep up. Uh, it's very apt title, Sun Behind the Cloud. Unfortunately, this sun is behind the clouds today. So which is allowed a lot of you to not come. And I myself spent 20 minutes today on the Adyar Bridge. This normally takes me just about five or six minutes. So uh, notwithstanding that, I think the initiative is to try and understand more about Tibet. This movie, uh, thanks to Bala and his team, uh, they were able to get in touch with these people. And uh, get this. this is an old movie, it's not a very recent movie, it's 2017. Uh, the new one we should have seen uh, is coming up in 2022. And that's on Dalai Lama himself. And uh, I'm sure we'll look forward to it and we'll have an opportunity to interact. Uh, just before uh, uh, you know, I came here, uh, Colonel Krishna Swami was recounting uh, the whalers of General uh, Zanathar Kothuriya. So, you know, it is amazing, you know, you almost just Google it and you'll get the complete thing. There's also a complete page on Wikipedia on uh, the general who went into Tibet, who went up to Manasarovar. And uh, the experts are there and Colonel uh, Krishna Swami was telling me that there is a flag of uh, one of the Chinese regiments which was captured. And it's there, so I requested him to share the complete details of this so that we can carry it on our website. So this is the kind of uh, history that is there, but we are more rooted now in uh, trying to understand a little more about the present day conditions. Uh, there are no increasing signs, to be honest, because during the COVID time, we've had many scholars uh, who interacted with us, uh, who had first-hand visits, both uh, you know, with the proper visas to visit papers, as well as some clandestine visits which were possible. And their accounts tell us clearly that there is increasing harmonization and uh, the, this technology, the artificial intelligence, face recognition has been used extensively to prevent people from getting together. Uh, you all will recollect that you know, regularly you would see some kind of self-immolation efforts. It was very regular and you would see a front page to say that you know one more uh, monk immolated himself or a Tibetan national immolated himself. You don't see that anymore. Because that's the kind of surveillance that they have uh, had. I think the total number of uh, cameras that uh, uh, China has installed 
in Tibet, Xinjiang and other places is, is phenomenal, the density is phenomenal. So all this is to prevent any any kind of a thing. You know, they're also being put through the, <coughs> the reorientation camps, whatever name you call it. But also more importantly, now after the standoff, a lot more Tibetans are being encouraged to join the PLA army. And that's something because they, they know their lung capacity obviously is much different. <coughs> they live in those heights and they are better suited for mountain warfare. So you know, they, the Chinese, uh, we have to grant that you know, they do a lot of study on uh, how, how to uh, uh, achieve their objectives, whether it's uh, Xi Jinping or Hu Jintao or whoever. But the point is that they use everything under their means. And uh, this is where, this is the backdrop of uh, uh, before we screen the movie and uh, have some discussions on this. The idea is to try and understand what can India do? India has done whatever it could. You know, of course, everybody today says that it was a wrong policy pursued by India at that time, where uh, we allowed the Chinese to change the border. No, otherwise it was the Tibet which was the buffer state. And so we shared border with Tibet and not with China. And thanks to the fact that we allowed this uh, uh, overtaking of Tibet, that we shared borders now with China and uh, we had a lot of disputes. <coughs> so Tibetans over here, uh, that of course is a separate topic for discussion by itself. And uh, uh, the refugees here, though India is not as to the, the UN Convention on refugees, we look after them well because the Sri Lankans, whether they are uh, the Tibetans or whether it's somebody else who's come here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, done that. We've done it from the time of time when Parsis came here, you know, where they were integrated into the society. And today it's one of the most vibrant communities here. So uh, there are many, many angles to the, the Tibet uh, challenge. So there's one frequent question that comes up, say, can India play the Tibet card? So where is this Tibet card? It's lost its sheen and, you know, it's perhaps uh, being uh, cut in many places. So is there still some scope for using the Tibet card? I don't know. It's for us to look at it and see how it can be done. Uh, <coughs> there are many scenarios which have been worked out to see whether this is a possibility or not. So I won't take too much of time because there will be also some discussions after the screening. With the movie, it's a documentary. Uh, it's also available on Amazon Prime for some of your friends who could not come here. It's also available there. You can see it. And, uh, it's an eye opener in many areas. But like I said, a lot has changed between 2017 when the film was made and now. And uh, so we will try and update uh, all of you on this. And some of the youngsters who are here, I'm happy to see so many of you despite the range. Uh, so I'm sure that movie and the discussions thereafter will not disappoint you. Also, we'll encourage you to become the uh, my uh, members of the Young Minds of Chennai Center for China Studies, which is a vibrant community of some 280 odd people. We had a lot of inputs including on your career, including on various things that are happening around the world, etc. So you can contact either uh, Danya, Sapna, or Bala, one of them over here, uh, to try and become members so that you get updated right now. Thank you, and uh, thank you all for being here despite the weather. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, the special address will be delivered by Mr. Tenzin Lekshay, spokesperson and additional secretary, Department of Information and International Relations, Central Tibetan Administration. Right after the uh, special address, the screening of the documentary will happen. So, thank you.